thank you, Kim. I mean, he has been very instrumental for many, many years now to build up a relationship with us. And so we have quite a few guys from UAB coming over us and uh, making this work out. And Darren, he's probably more Nepali than me. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so we have quite a good, good uh, long-standing relationship with us. And uh, recently we built up on that personal relationship. We also have now institutional MOU as well to make us feel we are more aligned or more of family than simply individuals over there. So thank you, Kim. And uh, what I will do is like, I have to give you a very brief overview of uh, what was Patton Hospital, how we became Patton Academy of Health Sciences, what we are doing, and what we, why we created it, basically, and what is the aim and mission and visions. So I'll just walk you through very briefly with my family background. Uh, that time it was uh, long back, almost uh, Okay. It should go itself. Yeah. So it was uh, my wife, and uh, that time there was no medical college in my country, so I had to go to China to study medicine. It was in Shanghai. And this is where I met my wife, so I got double degree, yes. and a medical degree, and a cert medical marriage certificate as well. So, and she has been back to Nepal and working uh, at the same hospital, Patan Hospital. You should go itself. I was primary on this one. I don't know. So, uh, and these are two daughters, now grown up. As so when I saw them in this picture, they can't believe that this is them. Okay, now it's going. And they are quite fond of this playing, uh, playing piano as well. And this is what we thought that I never learned it. And I was always, Doctor, only doctor, nothing more than that. No. So these kids, they are doing, they, they make their own uh, parties and all, so this is good that to see that these days, the schools they have in, uh, now the elder one is, had come to class 12, she's going to college this year. Why? Two daughters over there, this is family gathering back home. And this is what now I am, no more black hairs over there, all gray. <laughs> so this is the, my wife, that is the first time she put on Nepal address over there, last year. So this is what I will uh, start now about this, what the academy has been and what is the aim of this academy. So basically I'll be talking more on social responsibility. The hospital itself, it just started long back in 53, very small clinic, 15 bedded in 74. The work started to build up with uh, MLG with this uh, district hospital in 82. The Mission Hospital and the Lalitpur District Hospital combined together to become Patan Hospital. And there had been lots of uh, other interest in uh, society and outside the world as well. This is one of the, we call it uh, Friends of Patan Hospital. They had helped us to build some of the facilities over there. And this is the former Prime Minister, Koirala. He is just facilitating these guys who help us build one children ward over there. And this was also helped by other guys. This is the Simons family from ESC, a uh, very generous guy, and they supported us to build one uh, maternity, uh, maternity wing in name of their children, uh, son, who was supposed to be a medical doctor earlier, but somehow didn't make it. So in the memory of that. This is what Patton Hospital, for the last 15 years, we have been involved in telemedicine as well. So this is the hub of telemedicine, a SARC telemedicine can in Patton Hospital. This is what I just wanted to do, the development itself, like medical records. We are the only hospital that we have kept this record for the last 50 years. Now the time is to probably make it further, digitalize it, and then uh, make it more electronic. But that, depends, that demands lots of logistics anyway. So we, this is the plan <laughs> we're trying to move. This year we'll be starting from OPD, emergency, all it now is done. So start from the OPD section, then slowly move it into ward as well. So what we have been for the last 50 years is 
the philosophy has been that we never turn away any patient in our hospital. So, and every year we have a certain fund that we use for charity for all the patients. So even though this is not a government funded hospital, we uh, self generate ourselves. But the policy is that we have dedicated staff and certain world culture and we take care of all the patients who come through. We have our own pharmacy, our own supplies, so they don't have to go outside to buy medicine, which is the norms in all the hospitals in the country. So we are the only hospital that we have our own supplies, our own pharmacy, we can control. We started with 138 beds hospital long back in 82. Uh, in 2005, the mission moved out so into the mission hospital. By 2005, it was handed over to Nepalese management. And I was part of that management for two terms, eight years. So I do have some knowledge of management over there, which I was on that board for two, two terms. Now it is a, a nearly 500 bed hospital. This year we'll be adding some more to make it 700 bed hospital. Some of the figures you can see over there. We see through almost about 330,000 OBD patients, outpatient. Almost 30,000 surgeries and almost 10,000 deliveries. So this is what we have. That um, why pass came into being is, like you can see the very stark data over there. The gap between urban areas and the rural areas. So you have over, this one you can see very easily, that you have almost double the rate of this uh, mortality in uh, 132 versus 60. Same country. And this was a probably motivating factor for us to do something for those communities who are unserved and neglected. So all the doctors we have in uh, sitting in Kathmandu itself, having good life over there, which is true for any individuals. We want to have a good life, but at the same time, we do have certain responsibility as well. And then we thought, besides being a just service hospital, why not build up on a program that we can produce socially accountable health personnel to do equitable service as well. This is the unbelievable thing over there, see. This is the life expectancy in this kind of community in my country, below 50. Could be lots of region over there. Come to Kathmandu, then we are proud that we can live as good as Western life over there. 50 versus 78, almost 80, same country. And this is where it becomes what is responsibility of we living in the same country, enjoying everything and not doing for the death community over there. So this is where it comes to social justice, responsibility and all. So this was a motivating factor for us to develop into a medical college, do something for those communities as well. Who we say that they are also Nepalese, they vote for the government, but what the government is doing for them and what the society is doing for them. So if you wait till the government do, does something, well, it will be too late probably, so we'll just start it ourselves and do something for them as well. I think this is universal everywhere. Why people do not want to go to rural areas? You have the same problem in Canada as well, you have the same problem in America as well, all around the world. People do not want to go there, they claim that less infrastructure, no motivation, less money, no career over there, lots of things could be there. And uh, this was something like what we, I thought, why it is so only we healthcare professionals do not want to go to rural areas. And you could see it was the same like uh, other guys go there, like say the factories. We get electricity, it's not producing in Edmonton, I think, some sort of else. So over there, our engineers can go there and build a dam and we can then build a powerhouse. But we think that we doctors are too knowledgeable probably, and we think too much that, oh, there is no security, no life over there, and we don't go there. But so, so something probably where we are too educated, too self-conscious probably, and that keeps us, so this was some sort of the motivation why we do not go there, and these are the problems, and how we can address that, those problems through our curriculum, through our program back home. When I went to college, there was no medical college in Kathmandu, in the whole Nepal. Now we have almost 20. Out of 20, the problem is that 
almost 16 is for private, for profit. And this problem lies. So you have 16 medical colleges, all for money. In Kathmandu, you have less than 800 population and one physician. Go to mountain or hills area, rural areas, you have nearly 100,000 for one doctor. And this is where it is. So that's why we thought that how we can address this situation over there. It's not that we don't have doctors, we have doctors, but how to distribute them? You have the same problem over here as well. You have doctors who are jobless, sitting in Vancouver, sitting in Edmonton, sitting in Toronto, no job, but no doctors in periphery. So you have to wait for doctors from Ethiopia, doctors from Nepal, doctors from India to work in those areas. But the own native people will not go there. So this is the same problem everywhere. The, ma well, the magnitude could be different, level could be different, but same problem. And this is what we thought that could be that medical education and medical service. Or there is something missing over there. And we thought that we could that missing link between the education and the service. So do something for that and uh, produce medical or health manpower that can do the service. So this is what was, was built upon the partnership philosophy that we have to provide service to the community and uh, to all of them. Be a socially responsible hospital. We have been already. Now we want to be service provider at the same time produce responsible, qualified health manpower to address this issue in the rural district hospital to strengthen the national health system. So I don't believe that only we doctors are only to provide service to the patients only. This is our responsibility to build a health system as well. Because the health minister had no knowledge of health anyway, most of the time. Mm -hmm. And they make the policy. So why we can't be in that system? Pardon hospital itself passed, became like this is our mission and vision we have that is a socially responsible institution, altruistic, humane, and perfect. Try to be. Manpower watch itself, the only thing what we need is appropriate distrib distribution in the right places. And what we addressed this was with the curriculum, aim is to maintain the score knowledge, at the same time try to change the behavior of the trainees or the physicians over there during their, their training. So how we do that, that's a policy like we said earlier, like people don't want to go there because of money reason, financial reason, profession, career, family. So these issues we have to address through the curriculum itself. So this is what we thought and we took lots of time to since we took almost five, more than five years to develop curriculum itself. So we had lots of meetings, advisory committee meetings and all. And this is where lots of universities got involved, including UAB, McMaster, UBC, and lots of other countries as well. And we discussed what could be the, Bob Uller was the guy who really pushed it through in the very beginning, and lots of guys came through. So this is where we discussed lots of issues to how to deliver a curriculum that will be more socially responsible and produce the needed health manpower. So our curriculum is not any model from anywhere. This is ML everything together. Recruitment wise, this is what we do. Whom to teach, what to teach, and how to teach basically. The, the knowledge is the same, one is how to teach them and where to teach them. So all had been addressed in the curriculum itself. Recruitment wise, we give priority to the need of the rural communities. So in our system is such that we do have an entrance exam, merit based. So all this will have to pass this exam. And then we have a multiple mini interview, MMI, for interview as well. And we give priority to the students who are from public school, rural areas, who are from poor background, ethnic minorities, and they get extra points on top of their grades in the exam. So chances is that they get in the system with preference. So we'll come to the data afterwards. And they are supposed to be 
providing services at least two to four years to the community, district or district below district level. So the one is the entrance criteria is defined. Theory is that people who are from rural community, poor background, they think, well, chances are that they will go back and serve their community. Not 100%, but this is what the research has shown, basically. Community engagement is a priority, and we have almost about one third of the curriculum is designed in such a way, from right from the very first year, the students are supposed to go in the community itself, get more accommodated with the community over there, they live with the family in the villages. They eat with them, whatever they eat over there. So this is what keeps them going, and from very village level to the district level, in all the levels of this national health system, they are exposed from the very beginning. So they are not scared to be trained in partner hospital, the tertiary care hospital, and then suddenly they have to go work in the district. So we have just prepared them from the very beginning. We do have lots of support from our community as well. This has been for the last 12, 13 years before we turn into academy itself. Friends of Partners from a US-based uh, organization. Then we have local, and that's what we are encouraged about. This is a supermarket, uh, Bhatpatin supermarket, very chain of supermarket in Kathmandu. And they have been so generous to provide us two scholarships every year for the last four years. And in Nepal, this is not like you guys. Government do not rebate the tax. So this is what is more, I feel that uh, taking out money from his pocket. And then we have IAB, the International Advisory Board of PASS itself, multiple around the globe. UAB is one, Kim has been here for many years. Now Darren is over there, taking lots of leads over there. So there are many people over on this IAB board to support us intellectually, academically, and so Jay, you are doing a good job. And that keeps on going. This we have continued, what we have been doing for the last 50 years, for our patients, for our families, for the society, that continues. Again, this is something different, what we have been doing for many, many years, before we became in university. We are the only hospital probably in the country that we do disaster drill every year. Not even police hospital do that. Not even army do that, but we do that. Meaning that there's something more than medical education itself. And then of course we have ongoing education itself. And our students have been so encouraging these last four years. Uh, they would organize lots of events over there, like blood donations, our medical students, like some charity funds over there. This was the recently, and I be the vice chancellor, I have to get first, okay, come on, get my blood over there. That should be a role model over there. So just like two month, three months back, and they would organize everything. And these medical students are not like you guys. They are freshly high school graduates. Very green when they come in. And probably this is also one thing that they are so green that you can model them in different ways probably. So this is a give and take both sides. They are not mature enough to think better, but they are also very receptive as well. So this is up to us educators how we educate them. Lots of challenges over there. Even though we are a government hospital or government institution, only about 6% of the budget comes from government. That also in grants funding only, buildings and all. This is what has been challenging for us. We have to generate almost all our funding. And we're now, because of university, we have to add up the department, a scale of the services, and that gives us less of burden to us as well. So this year, we're going to start lots of departments that have not been over there, the eye, neurosurgery, oncology. Academic program-wise, we have been running, and we plan to start this one this year, a nurse midwifery program, and then uh, also Public health this year will be starting. Fellowship has been started. Uh, last time it was uh, Dan who did lots of work over there to start emergency medicine fellowship. This is postgraduate fellowship. And we'll be doing in some other areas as well. Uh, again, this is something different that we're trying to do. Diploma leading to master's program. Meaning that our MBBS graduates, they will undergrads when they complete, they will have one year extensive training in fields that are necessary in the district. Then send them over there for two to four years bring them back again to do formal three years masters. 
So this way, they will be staying service, doing service for two to four years and get a degree as well. So if you wait for three to five years to get them trained, probably not necessary. So the service will be part of the training itself. Again, because we are not government funded, so we had to squeeze in between our hospital compound itself to build the school that we are providing 60 students per year, teaching 60 students per year students over there. Plan is to, this is the emergency building, quite, quite crowded. We see almost 150 to 200, sometimes 200 patients in a crowded room, much smaller than this one probably. Uh, yeah, <laughs> almost same size, yeah. And this is what we have been doing for many years. The plan is to just use the space and build further on that one. We'll see uh, when we can do it. The typical curriculum is six years we have, because this is a fresh graduate from the high school. And we take health science background as well. That's why we have half year of this introductory block to teach them some sciences. And who are from science background, we teach them something extra, like ethics, uh, ITs, Moral, all this education. What is different is like the clinical year, we have six months of block posting for the final year students in the district. So they stay in the district hospital for six months. And this is where they get to learn how to work in a district hospital or below district hospital. This is again something different from what we have over there. Very, I would say very unique program over there that uh, lots of time we do talk about interprofessional relationship, but we hardly do that. We are very impact factor journals, what is the theory about interpersonal relationship. What we went ahead and do it, did it was, our medical guy, student guys, they, in the very first year, the first week of their medical school, they will be posted as a nurse. So they call it nursing posting. And they will be do doing duties just like nurse making beds, taking vitals, taking of the patients, just to have a feeling, how does it feel like to be a nurse? And the uh, aim is to intermingle them with the nurses as well. So there's not big gap between, professional gap between physician and nurses. And in my country, the theory would be like, we physician, we think we are somewhere floating over here. <laughs> and nurses are over here. This is a common feeling over there. So we have to just bring it down as much as possible. And young guys, they love to work with the nurses anyway. So this is quite famous, quite popular program over there. This is one of our best, first year students. They will be going to the community and uh, them doing some small research projects, like how, what is the sanitation, what is the food habit over there. In the first year, not the medical stuff itself, but very general stuff. And they'll have to present that in the community itself. And the community will evaluate them how they did their work. So this is already 360 degree evaluation for the students. And if they don't pass in that assessment by the community, they will have to repeat it again. So make sure that they do learn over there and they do service. Otherwise, they will be going to community posting and staying in the hotel, like a hiking and trekking, and then really doing the stuff over there. So we make sure that they do their work. This is what we see. Out of 2,000 students per year, we have in trans exam, in which we do not ask them science. So we do not ask them physical and biology. What we ask them is mental attitude test, that what is the moral values, what the ethics, the general knowledge, those things. And out of that, we select 450. So what do we see? This is consistency, like we ha almost all have 2,000 students. That means that our program is quite popular. For 60 students, we have to screen for 2,000 students. Almost 85% of the students are from outside Kathmandu Valley. We have maximum students, you can see still, almost 50% is from public school. And public school in Nepal can be really public. Very less infrastructure, very, the only those guys who are brightest, they come out of this school, even though being in a village. So we did give them extra marks. Rural origin, you can see over there. So our system, even though we do not have different quotas for them, System is built in such a way that they come in preference with preference. Minorities, you can see over there, it's all combined. Madhesi, minorities, Dalit, all combined. This is untouchable, we say, in the community. So they wouldn't have any chance to go to school. So all combined together, we have also about 50% is from those backgrounds. So like you guys have your high, you have special quotas for Aboriginal classes. We do not have quotas. 
But system is so that they compete and they get in. Much better. So they, they feel better that they are competing with other guys and they are competent enough. This is what has been difficult for us. Village, district hospital and past combined together and work in a team spirit. Politically, it can be very political, the system we have over there. Like my post, you see, our line ministry is the Minister of Health. And we are the executive council that we run the show. We meet every day, every week, planning everything, day to day business. And health minister will propose three names to prime minister. And he will, or she will pick up one name for vice chancellor. It's a very political can be sometimes. And uh, for last one and a half year I have been in the post, I have seen three prime ministers already changed. So you can imagine, if they want to manipulate, they can manipulate very well. And very, Paran Hospital itself is governed by the EC, EC committee over there. So in that committee we have hospital director as well. And all the finances, all this planning, governing is by the EC, is the council of which the vice chancellor is the chairperson. Past Senate, we have more than 25 guys over there. We meet once a year, and Prime Minister chairs the session, Prime Minister, Health Minister, and lots of secretaries over there. But this is only once a year, so thanks God that they don't come every week to tell us what to do. So that's, even being very political, they have very less leverage to manipulate us. District hospital, what we have can be very different than what you guys have over here. So I see lots of time, this is, oh, straight from UAB, they go to district hospital, rural posting as well. But your rural hospital can be very different than ours. This is the rural hospital you have over there. This building is the hospital. We call it a building. This is a cow, cow shed, probably what you will say over there. But this is where we work. And this is where we provide services. And this is the hospital that we have to support we have the capacity to build these kind of hospitals. So this year we have started four hospitals in districts, all government hospitals, and we have Gorkha Hospital. These two are in mountain, two are in uh, plain areas. This is in the plain areas hospital, a bit better than mountains. This could be from 15 to 25 beds, depending on the situation. This is also in plain areas, normal privacy, so much bigger building over there. And for that, this hospital, what we have planned is and doing is, we have this virtual classroom, academic software for these hospitals, linked by tail link in virtual classroom. So we can do classroom from partner hospital itself. Uh, sorry, this is the this is one, one zero more over here. And this was, uh, this whole facility, the, the software was, software and, uh, and uh, equipment was supported by one of our faculties who, IAB member, Carl Stove from McMaster. He was very instrumental to build up holes. So it doesn't cost much money. For four sites, you have $2,500. This is about six, $700 per site to start with. So we can do the same thing like teleconferencing everything in the real time, audio, visual, both. Each hospital is manned by a GP who is residential full time over there very difficult job in Nepal to get GP in districts. So they are, they are very scarce, not like you guys over here. <laughs> they come in, you have to look, look, look after the whole, them in the whole country. So we have that, and then we have six months posting for our students over there in, four, in, in all these four districts. And we provide uh, periodic surgical camps, or the, what is needed in the district, district from the central hospital itself. So we go periodically over there do the services, and then like for last six months we had me, myself, and my dean, we went together in a surgical camp, and this was the first time for that district, which is only about four, four hours drive for Kathmandu, for the first time any surgery under general anesthesia was done over there. So you can imagine the impact of those kind of services in those districts. We intend to stay in the district for five to six years minimum in that district, till we feel that they are capable enough to provide service to the district hospitals. And our students in that district hospital will be going into the community as well. So there will be some projects over there. And the hope is that whole health indices in that district will be better. 
in five or six years time. Very big undertaking this was, and uh, original plan was two years earlier that Ministry of Health, local hospital, and PAS will have tripartite agreement, will go ahead, and the government will fund us. They backed off. So we have to go ahead ourselves. So we just signed an agreement with this local hospital, uh, not in terms of money, but in terms of services, what we provide them, the manpower and services, which is a big undertaking for us. Like you have to transport students, transport faculties, rent houses over there for dormitories over there, security reasons, so lots of logistics are there. But somebody has to do it, and uh, we are trying to, our best to do it over there. That's very simple. I will give you the, the how the small amount of money can do lots of things over there. Like say, one district camp, we have done two. We go two surgeons, uh, we went, one nurse, one anesthetist, just in the very beginning. Later, probably, we don't need uh, nurses or anesthetists to go there. One and guy. So, all this three days camp, two vehicles, three days cost, it's hardly about $2,500 per camp, in per site. So, not a huge amount of money. But what we could save was all this to combine together probably we need about $200,000 per whole site. And the outcome you could see over there is marvelous. That this, on this amount of money we can do service to the almost 20 surgeries over there. That means we are helping 20 families over there. Government has been, what has been doing, doing is for last centuries probably over there is they will Started one helicopter from Kathmandu, go to mountain, I brag about, oh, I did this camp, I saw 500 patients over there. Next five years, they are lost. Nobody's there. No follow up over there. So we see some disputes of medicine, and they have been spending tremendous amount of money, but no outcome. And that has to be changed. So our aim is to adopt district hospital, partner with them, provide services, and let society see that you don't need tremendous amount of money to do services. And hopefully, the government will see this role model from us, and they'll do something at a policy level basis. So that's what we are trying to do. Same patient, if they come to Kathmandu to have the similar services, they would have to spend at least 100 times more than for that. We are providing only this amount of money, but they will have to spend this amount to get the same services. This means that they will never come to Kathmandu, that they can't afford to have it. And most of them, they can't afford to have it. So this is the aim that from Kathmandu itself, we go to district, not they come to us all the time. So policy top-down attitude as well, not all the time down-up attitude. So, and we hope that it will be working. And we'll keep all the records of this patient as well, just to show afterwards that. District hospital can be very challenging. This is the, this is the operation theater over there. Nothing like you guys over here, you know. Your ER is better equipped than your, my OT over there in district. But still, you can't have excuses that no facility I don't work over there. That's, this is where we did all the surgeries. We took our nursing team one. We do also counseling as to the patient as well. Uh, and uh, we, at the same time, the reason we took nurses was to just train the local nurses over there as well. So they will be, next time I don't have to take them again over there. So she will teach the how to autoclave, how to do things over there in major cases. And uh, this is where myself, anesthetist, and uh, our nurse over there. So this is where capacity building was only, not only for providing services, what we intend to do is that all the four district hospitals at least will have minimum facilities power supply, oxygen, cautery machine in the OT, minimum equipment to do anesthesia over there, and then you can do lots of services over there. So uh, what I see over here is the socially accountable infrastructure institute we have been for many years, with on the same philosophy for the last five decades, we have built upon this self-sustained system with curriculum design, community engagement, with its district postings, lots of it combined together. Because one formula doesn't work in all the situations. You have to have multiple, multi-pronged approach as well. And ho we hope that this combined effort together will have better outcome.
this we intend to do all the time that provide these services and uh, that's some needs are there. Government or the society is a bit different like in our society, you know. Maybe the government policy is not such that people will donate money because it's not tax debatable over there. So people said, why do I don't want my income over there? But it's still, the need is there and we have been trying to do, upgrade our services, provide, hopefully we'll have our own land for the campus outside and then slowly we'll expand on this training that this is what we have been doing already for the last 20 years. So I do see there are lots of partnership and lots of work that we can do together, VAB and we can do together. Residents from here, the medical students from here can come up to us and see something differently that we have been for the last 20 years having had lots of students coming from outside as well. So there's lots of reciprocal learning and reciprocal teaching over there. Research-wise, we do have all the, like Oxford research, they have helped us to build one lab for the last 10 years, probably we are working over there. Cities Influencer has been there to build the lab, to do some research over there. So we do have a molecular research lab as well. So we do lots of molecular research as well over there. genotyping and even sequencing also over there. In pipeline is, public health school is coming up this year. Nursing school will be starting by end of this year or even early next year. This program like Diploma leading to MD will be starting hopefully this year. So lots of programs are in pipeline. Fellowship one is already started uh, in emergency medicine. We plan to start in surgical oncology, GI surgery, urogyne, and other rheumatology as well. So we have some uh, good colleagues to help us out over there. This is where again we have from uh, lots of coming to our school with this selective or elective posting for the students as well. And this is where you can partner with easily, without much hassle over there. So both things can be done in postgraduate or undergraduate as well. So, and sometimes when it comes to going gets difficult, then you need something extra as well. And lots of time I do that thing that going gets difficult sometimes. And uh, very naturally, sometimes then you look forward, what is humanity, what is ethics, some of the readings over there. This is uh, maybe some of us seen it. The Gita is a very philosophical book from Hindu Ramayana. And it will tell you that whatever is happening is for good. And what will happen is also for good. <coughs> that we came in this world empty-handed, and we will go empty-handed as well. What I have today is what somebody else's yesterday, and will be somebody else's tomorrow. So why we all the time brag about, I have a Ferrari car, I have a big house. <laughs> that's transitional. But that's, sometimes you get the feelings of that, that there's something more than having this thing alone. And this was the same like even Einstein. So when he reads Bhagavad Gita, he feels something different than his own invention. So, this is just for food for thought, and I do read some of all of these Gitas, even Ramayana, Bible, even Quran, everything. But philosophically, all are the same, nothing much different. We hope that uh, we'll continue to provide service to all, socially accountable manpower, and overall, work together that we can do something better. Which alone we can't do. So based on partners' back, uh, background, we built a pass to continue linking over there. And this is what we have been trying to do. Put patient, society, and the community at the center. Not the big institution, University of Alberta. It's good. But for whom? It's for the society, it's for the community. So this is what the tradition has been. The list is very long. We have about 40 institutions in and out of the country that we have partnered with. The blue ones are when I came into the being and my aim was to expand it internally. So all the, these are district hospitals, mm -hmm. local hospitals. So we have more than 10 is inside the country itself. The bold ones are inside the country. The hospitals and the institutions. But what I feel was 
if unless you do not have partnership with the local institution, your message won't get expanded. This is what it was. Now we are here, long way, almost 50 years. And I'm thankful for my family that they have supported me all along. My daughters and my wife. And thank you and namaste to you all that uh, you gave a time and came over here. I will have a few questions if you have one. And I will have a maybe five, six minute videos for those guys who are not in Kathmandu till now, just to feel that you are in Kathmandu. Thank you. So I will take any questions if you have, otherwise I will go to the videos. Let me have questions first probably, if you have anything. Or maybe I was too good to explain everything. Yeah, Darren. I have a question, Dr. Uh, Shah. You talked earlier about the challenges uh, that we face with rural, rural recruitment and retention. Yes. Reasons why doctors and healthcare workers may not want to remain rural, but yes. some do go and some do stay. Yes. What, what are the reasons why people do go and do stay? What are the what are the attractions to rural service partners? I think foremost would be the change in attitude during education itself. Mm -hmm. That they have to feel something that they became doctors because of society. And I try to tell my students, like say, we universities graduates over here, what is the percentage of students that they make to the universities? Mm -hmm. Hardly 10 to 15, 15% in all around the world. So we are far more lucky than other guys in the society. That demands from us to give back to those 85% who did not make to the universities. So there's not a big thing of bragging about I'm the university graduates, unless you do something with those 85% who didn't make it. Curriculum itself, like we have the entrance criteria, which is different. Aim is to bring those guys from the community itself. And most of the research has shown that chances are more for them to serve their community where they belong to. Of course, that alone doesn't work. Having said that, then we have this, those students who have to motivate them by taking them to the same community in rural districts from village level to the district hospital, just to expose them what is the reality over there, how people are living there, what is the health needs over there. So there's no fun being a big doctor and not serving the community. So they get this feeling from the very beginning that they are doctors Community and society made them doctors, so there's something more that they have to give back to the society. So this kind of philosophy are instilled very from the very beginning, not theoretically but practically as well. Well, that philosophy I've heard echoed definitely in some of the students who had been sponsored by their communities. Exactly. Or if they had simply been selected from the community. So this is like we have uh, a scholarship scheme is three types of scholarship scheme we have. One is that supported by the other faculties. And we have one called collaborative scholarship. That means that community, what we do is, say for one district, this year, will be one seat for that district. So that student will not have to compete with whole, with whole Nepal. They will be competing with the students in that district only. And that district, all the villages, they will pitch, pitch in some money. So they will provide half money from that district hospital community. We'll waive them half tuition fee. And this is their job because they feel that they have been provided by that community a scholarship, so this is obligation to them to go back and serve. And the community itself, they feel that because they have provided scholarship, this is their duty also to bring them back over there. So this is multi-pronged approach over there, what we are doing. Entrance criteria, scholarship scheme, teaching methodology itself, role modeling. On top of that, our plan is like I said, they are going, they are going to this district for four years. Mm -hmm. And in that four years, what we'll be doing is enrolling them in certain programs itself as a family medicine. The course is for three years. For them, we'll extend to five years probably. So after that four years, two years will be counted as a training period. Bring them back again for one year in the center itself. And by five years, they'll be graduate. So they'll be happy to work in the district. At the same time, be enrolled in program. Link the telemedicine later on to that area and bring them up. Yeah. I have to say, 
say that I really, really like that program that you just described about the continuing involvement in your graduate's career, yes. education and scholarship. Our Department of Medicine uh, just came up with a strategic mission and we didn't articulate that anywhere near as clearly. But we did articulate that one of our strategic goals would be to, to commit to the long-term continued career plans of our graduates from our internal medicine program. Um, I don't know if it will take the same format, but I think the philosophy of continuing engagement is, is a fantastic one. It's, it's a really good commitment to the spectrum of career from entering medical school right out of high school into being involved after their formal graduation. Yes. So people that do other things, like we all the time, we academicians and we educators, we talk about lifelong learning, team spirit. It's very good theory, but we hardly would do that really. And sometimes, I don't know why, but most of us educators, maybe we have been in this business for too long, and we think, my job is only for five years probably, then I'm gone. And somebody else will take care of this. Nobody takes care of it. When we are over there, we have to design it, we have to really do it. And very simple philosophy for me is like, try your best. If you don't succeed, at least we can say, oh, I tried my best, but I didn't succeed. And then somebody else will take over where we get stuck. So it's always good that what you have said, model can be different, but at the start of the philosophy, that philosophy is to engage them after graduation. And let them feel that they are not abandoned in the district. While we, me as a VC, I stay in AC room in Kathmandu. And if I tell myself, go and work in the rural district, nobody will go there. <laughs> People will do what they see. Yeah. Um, one of the things that the library here does um, to help with some of the intellectual isolation is in partnership with the University of Calgary, we offer a suite of uh, information resources that are actually available in various locations throughout Alberta and a lot of rural locations. So one of the things that we'll be exploring with the library at your university is whether or not that model is something that can be extended into, into um, because we have a lot of learning about... Oh, that's very fantastic. Like, um, you know, there's all kinds of other challenges to do with technology and, and things like that. And so, Part of the discussion we started having is actually print-based, but that's a, that's a step in the right direction because libraries actually can help with that intellectual isolation piece. Yes. So uh, that's a way probably to go like uh, not the print-based itself as far as possible if the technology allows, yes. if it's affordable, if it's sustainable then we should be moving in the direction probably. And I'm thankful to you guys probably that you have helped my librarian to support him, train us. So thank you for that, that you have been engaged in that. Anything more? Or maybe I just relax with the video and then we have some more questions afterwards probably. So I'll pass this uh, lecture, enough lecturing. So I'll just pass this lecture part. I'll just get the main videos over there. And then you can have about five to six minutes, not very long. And I think it'll be entertaining as well. Professional because I had to make it myself, so it's not a very professional video, not like Kim, what he will make, but it's still so okay, I think. Yeah.
That's it, very quick. I just, I just break it, it forward it very fast, please. Yeah. So it was five, six minutes. I just, it's double the speed, so it was a bit faster, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to make it too long, probably. Yeah. Just to get the, some of the feelings like, uh, but the very interesting thing with my, uh, our, our two girls, you know, and so they will ask me, mommy, why you are so stupid to leave Shanghai and come to Kashmandu? For today's teenage, teenagers, to live life in Shanghai and come to Kashmandu. Asking me the same thing, daddy, why you guys are so naive to leave Shanghai, leave Hong Kong and come to Kashmandu? <laughs> Genuine question, probably. And then I tell them, like, nobody will miss me in Shanghai. Nobody will need my service in Shanghai, probably. There are enough people to serve over there. But I can do more where the need is. And hopefully they will take that message and do something, probably, in life as well. So thank you, guys, for your patience, your time. and. Uh, if you have anything more, probably last minute question, but like it is to answer it. If you have one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I can't understand you very well. Uh, maybe it's difficult for me. Maybe I'll maybe I'm Chinese. Maybe I'll talk in Chinese probably. Yeah. <laughs> you can ask me Chinese, no problem. I can speak Chinese. Yeah, yeah. I think there are many Chinese words in your yeah. slides, and maybe your wife, the name is Chinese name. Well, she's Chinese. Yeah, I think. That's what she name is Chinese so. still. Yeah. And you said your background of your education is in China. Shanghai. Yeah. Which? University? Uh, China, Shanghai. In Shanghai. Yeah. Uh, which? Chia, Chia University. Oh, Routine. Shanghai Jiang University? Routine Hospital, I yeah. work in Shanghai. I'm with his scholar from Shanghai. Which one? Um, uh, I work in Pudong, new area. Okay. In a oh, lovely. health yeah. research Good. In institute. So if, you, if, you, if possible, welcome you. So you can speak Chinese, right? Oh, my Chinese is very good. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm really ashamed about my English, maybe. So I have different... Which is fantastic. You can, you. you can talk. <laughs> Lots of guys. They can't. Right. It'll be a nice private <laughs> conversation. Can you speak Chinese? No, no. can you speak Chinese? Chinese no. Nobody can speak Chinese, you know? So that's my shame, you know? They can't, they can't even single word of Chinese. Yeah. And you can still communicate. Feel good about it. <laughs> that's it. You know, okay, it's more language. Chinese, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's good. Why not? <laughs> Thank you for our presentation. Thank you. <laughs> and basically, the language is basically just to for communication. It doesn't mean that if I can't write poetry, I don't mind. As long as I can talk with the people, mm -hmm. and they can understand me, I can understand them, it's good enough. Uh, you got your doctor degree in Shanghai Jiao Ting University? Oh, yeah. Medical doctor? Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's very good. Good, yeah. Uh, I graduated from Sudan University. Okay. Uh, major in health policy and management in public oh. health. Oh, good. Yeah, mm -hmm. so good. It's brother school Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> in Shanghai, there are two universities, the famous universities. The one is Futan, one is Chao Tong. Yeah. And uh, both are very good in, uh, they're very comprehensive institute. They have all the faculties. And last, just a few days back, my girls, they were looking at the website, and they say, Chao Tung University has 66,000 students. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there are so many. So this is like a big city itself. itself. Yeah. <laughs> so lots of faculties are there. I said, what to study? I said, go and look at it. There are so many over there. And that's it. Don't decide that now. Quit later. It is not time for you to decide probably. So this is something what it is like, lots of extensive programs like that. You came over here. The main thing is not to learn only about public health. What you learn about is much bigger dimension of society, of healthcare system, people's cultures. And that's what is about all this higher education. Otherwise you can stay at home and you can be equally educated. But that doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It has to be much broader perspective. So, main aim is of higher education like that you keep your mind wide open, be receptive to whatever comes in that bucket. Don't make it tunnel vision. This is the education, this is the way of doing things. There's no such thing in the world. Yeah. Albert, I can have their own program, I can have my program. 
I'm not going to have their program. Chinese can have their program. Mm -hmm. It's very different. <clears throat> Basically, human being all around the world, we are the same. It doesn't matter how I dress, it doesn't matter how you dress, the basic philosophy is basically the same everywhere. All of us, we feel good that we can do something good for the bigger community, mm. and that's inherent, built in, in all of us. Someone do less, someone do more, but basically all of us do the same thing. And it's always better to relate that message that is always better in giving than taking. And that's, the, that's what I feel is the basic philosophy, be education, be whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And we have the only curriculum in the whole world, probably in our, our curriculum, there will be word, compassionate, love, and feelings. And we have in our curriculum itself, in the mission and vision, mm -hmm. and goal over there. So that's we have built in this mission and vision, not only in writing, but we try to inculcate in that everyday teaching as well. So things can be different, uh, then the delivery could be different. Same curriculum, you can deliver in different ways. And that's what I'm trying to do. Same knowledge, deliver in different ways. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, we'll have different results as well. Thank you. <laughs>